Good morning, Lightning here. We are in Camarillo, California at the home of Will Wood Engineering to install some big brakes on the TRX. And the truck is off the ground. That HRE is a... It's a good looking Very, wheel, isn't yeah, it? Is a really the FT1 nice is a gorgeous wheel. Yeah, I really did a nice like job. It. This kit, though, is fairly tried and true. This has been on 2500 and 3500 series trucks yes. for what, seven, eight years more? Oh, we've been doing this dial of TX6R kit for probably 10 years now. So, this is our rotor. We've got the hat that goes on the other side of the rotor. And of course, this is our six piston caliper. And I want you to look at the size. Look at, well, I'm gonna do a selfie here. Look at this. Is that ridiculous or what? <laughs> Caleb, let's talk about the, uh, the setup here. All so right. first off, we've got the rotor that everyone is going to talk about because it's massive. This is 16 inch? Yeah, 16 inch, inch and three eighths thick. And it's gonna be a staggered van rotor as well. So it's gonna be a thermal, very thermally efficient rotor. It's our spec 37 material. And then we also got our TX6R caliper, six piston. It's an inch and three quarter, inch and five eighths, inch and five eighths. So it gives us a ton of clamping force. You got your big pads. They're gonna be able to drop right in with the safety pins and the slide pins there. And you got your aluminum hat assembly. That's gonna bolt to the front face of the rotor. And that's what's gonna be able to go and help you save a lot of weight on the system because you don't have that big one piece rotor, but you're also gonna be able to later on be able to change just the rotor ring and not have to do the whole one piece rotor itself. Willwood used to offer a curved vane design, which is going to be a specific left hand or right hand mounting side of the vehicle. Pull it up and here. now as you can see here, we've gone to a staggered straight vane design, which is, is still incredibly thermally efficient, but what it allows you to do is also have the same rotor from the left hand or right hand side on the vehicle if you're gonna be working with, say, a slotted or symmetric face rotor. On your drilled and slotted rotors, where you have a specific pattern for the driver's side or passenger side, you're still gonna have your individual left and right. But this new straight vane design is incredibly thermally efficient, uh, and again, allows you to be able to have that option to go from the left and right hand side of the vehicle for a plain faced or slotted style rotor. Just like, you know, you're bolting your, your heads to your engine, you gotta have it in a sequence. Well, like doing your wheel, you gotta go crisscross so that we get everything evenly torqued so that that hat will be on the face of the hub nice and, and uh, even. Well, the same thing when you're bolting down the rotor ring to the hat. So we go crisscross, then we'll do that in a torque series. So what I'm making sure is when we clean the hub, and the center register that our center register is nice and clean and that the rotor feels like it's going on nice and flush which i know it is because i cleaned it so well <laughs> so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use three of the lugs to hold it in place while we center up the caliper and shim it properly now that we're going to a fixed mount caliper, we have even amount of clamping force on both faces. And this is not moving, it's fixed. So now the pistons don't have to travel as far. So the clamping force or the clamping um, square area is very similar to the stock caliper. So what's gonna happen is instead of getting on the pedal with a floating caliper and you have to kind of push a little bit further because it's displacing more volume, that won't happen with this. So it's gonna give us a much better pedal feel. Right here, you can see that the chamfer on the outside diameter of the rotor and the top of the brake pad are meeting. Um, we like to be on a street car even with the outside diameter of the rotor. And on a race car, we even sometimes set the pad a little bit over the outside diameter of the rotor because rotors expand. So on a race car, we float the rotor so that they'll expand and contract so that it makes the rotor meet the top edge of the brake pad. So on your truck, Jay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one more shim in this step so that the brake pad's even with the outside diameter of the rotor. 
You can feel that okay. now it's matching the outside diameter, right? And just a tick under, but that's okay. Yep. Just okay. a tick. So we added the two shims to it, brought the radial height up. And then the reason that we use a radial stud, so everybody understands you've got tab mount calipers. So like even the factory caliper was a tab mount floating. So it bolted to the side this way, right? Yep. So that's a good way of doing it. But then radial mount gives you adjustability for radial height and side to side height with your bracket. Ah. And it also makes it a much stronger piece. We did a little bit of R&D and test, testing fitment on our brake line situation. Everything looks really good. So this is a steel braided brake line. Um, and what is factory? Is it steel braided? Or no, is it just rubber it, hosing? It's rubber and then down at the caliper it's hard. So it was a hard line that came out of the caliper and then it went to rubber. Uh, so we should feel a little less compliance, more positive pedal feel with this steel braided brake line. Oh, absolutely. Here, right? Okay. All right, so what's first up in the uh, weighing process here, the comparison? Well, let's do the caliper with pads and the bracket. All right. So the complete assembly, we're going to see how much this thing weighs. Twenty-six point three. Twenty-six point three pounds for the stock caliper. So thirty-two point four. Thirty-two point four six. Thirty-two point four six. Caliper so, only. Twelve. Let's round it up to thirteen. All right. And then I'm going to add. The brake pads. Sixteen point seven five. And then the and bracket. And the bracket. With its hardware. Okay. And the and the brake line. Whole brake line. Nineteen point twelve. Nineteen point twelve. Nineteen point thirteen if we round it up. So look at that, the hat's only four pounds. And the hat and rotor together are 28.25. With the bolt kit. Oh, with the bolts. Let's see. 28.65, 66, 28.66. Dude, so Mike. <laughs> it's, it's actually more than I thought. Look Jake. at this, Willwood. 47.79 pounds now per that's corner. Only, that's I know. only half. That's only one corner. And stock, 58.76. So we're right at 11 pounds, right? 11 pounds times two. Per corner, yeah. So that's 22 pounds. So we're letting it kind of bleed itself with gravity to fill this huge caliper up with fluid before we start bleeding the brakes. So. It'll take a few minutes, but uh, right now the bleeder's open. The master cylinder has the cap off the reservoir, so it'll it'll just kind of do its own thing and get that fluid out to this corner. He man, oh my gosh, 108 pounds right mm, there. Look at that. That look good, Jim. That is sexy. That look good. Who, who else has driven your truck? No one. <laughs> Let me see out this right now. I don't want to crash it. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold on. We're going to go out and bid the brakes. Super important when you're installing new brakes or pads, rotors, you got to go out and you've got to bed in the brake system. If you don't do it, what happens is the binders that are inside of the brake pad, they don't get hot and saturated. So we need to get the calipers saturated the rotor saturated, the brake pad saturated, so that that binder or the glue that holds the material together gets onto the face of the rotor. So I'm at 45, panic down to 20. Oh, that was good. Panic down to 20 like a kid ran out in front of you. What we're gonna do is we're probably gonna do that about six to eight times. Here we go again. 
We're gonna do that about six to eight times and what's gonna happen is we're gonna slowly saturate the brake system. So it's gonna get warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer till it gets hot. We want it to get hot. People say you're supposed to go out and just be easy on new brakes. That's false. You want to go out and get hard on the brakes. Really? Absolutely. So that you can get some temperature built into it to get that binder to get onto the face of the rotor. So I'm going to get a little more aggressive now. Okay, I'm going to put the window down for a second. All right. I'm not smelling it yet. You smell yeah, it? I smell it. Okay, so we're gonna do one more right up here to almost zero. Oh yeah. So once we let this thing cool down and your drive home, it's gonna feel really good. All right, it's been a couple of days since we installed the Willwood TX6Rs in the TRX, and look, everyone knows the TRX is fun to drive. I love it but it just got funner to drive, if that's at all possible. Because you can late brake now with so much more confidence. The Willwood brakes just, they feel positive. They don't have that inch of play that the stock brakes did. And, and granted, the stock brakes are good, right? They're really good for a truck, but they're not as good as these. And I've just had a blast driving around in LA traffic with these things. And uh, they're probably overkill for LA traffic, but I'm excited to get out into the desert and really romp them hard. And I, I, I have not detected any fade at all with these brakes. So these are gonna be killer out in the desert. Uh, what you guys are doing up at Willwood in Camarillo, California is incredible. Keep it up, five stars.